Hey everybody, this is Adam with Diadem Sports. Today we're going to be looking at our on-court evaluation session with Gary. Some key points we're going to be analyzing will be the swing speed, point of contact, and racket orientation. The first thing we're going to look over is Gary's swing speed. With our 3D motion capture system, we're able to break a player's swing speed down into a few categories. Angular speed, linear speed, and linear acceleration. Angular refers to the speed at which the racket accelerates upwards, while linear refers to the speed at which the racket accelerates forwards. The last category is linear acceleration, which will be showing a negative number. This negative number shows the amount of deceleration on contact. Knowing these factors, let's take a look at Gary's assessment information. Gary came into the hitting session with the Yonix E-Zone. While hitting, we were able to see a couple of details that pointed out this wasn't the best fitting racket. As you can see from the assessment, one of our biggest areas of concern came from the deceleration of Gary's swing. Gary ended up choosing one of our customized elevates out of our demo wall. As you can see, his linear and angular speed increased while his deceleration value actually lowered. Both his forehand and backhand were improving in all categories. Even though all of Gary's swing speed numbers were improved, we still felt like the racket was overall too heavy to switch to. This is where the values for racket orientation start to come into play. As you can see in the chart, Gary's forward direction values are very different. What we like to see in this value is a zero or a negative number for a couple of reasons. A zero value means the racket is parallel to the baseline on contact. A negative value means it's too early, and a positive value would show it's too late. One thing we've come to realize so far is that because we're doing this on a ball machine, we'd rather a negative number than a positive, because a ball machine will most likely be slower paced than a live ball rally. Seeing that Gary chose the Elevate 004 but had a slightly positive forward direction meant that we wanted to make the racket a little bit lighter overall so Gary would be able to maneuver the racket a little easier. Now we're going to take a look at Gary's swing. Normally if you were to hire an MRT to do an on-court racket evaluation, it would be solely based on what they see and the player's reactions. As you remember, Gary's forehand numbers were pretty similar as an average, but the major deterrent of his original racket was the deceleration after contact. Let's take a look at Gary's forehand with his Yonix Ezo. It's a little tough to tell on video, but during his hitting session we could tell he was struggling to keep his swing speed constant through the ball. If you remember Gary's numbers on his backhand, you'll notice this racket was a far better choice than his Ezo. With this difference, it's a lot easier to tell on our 3D motion capture system why we chose the Elevate 004. As you can see, Gary hitting with his Ezo, his swing is very compact, but there's no extension on his swing. There can be a couple of different reasons for this, but let's take a look at Gary's swing with the Elevate. As you can see, Gary started extending and accelerating better on his swing. This translated into a higher overall linear and angular speed, as well as a slower deceleration value. I hope you all enjoyed our video analysis of Gary's on-court evaluation over at Diadem Sports. Come visit us in Pompano Beach, Florida so we can help elevate your game.